Hello the there, neighbor Reno. It's got a long list of things to talk about in today's roundup. The links to all of these, as well as the timestamps, you can find in the description down below. First things first, there is a Kickstarter campaign in the works for a PlayStation game called Mars Alive. In the beginning of the game, you start out as a team of 18. However, after the result of a terrorist attack against this colony, you become one of two survivors. And it is up to you not only to find out what the cause of this attack was, but also whether or not you can rebuild all, all of this while trying to survive. You have limited food, water, and air. And if any of these run out, then you start to die. Pretty clear cut, right? Now, right now they have a July 2019 win 2019 launch window. However, in the event that they don't make the Kickstarter campaign, they may have to delay it for longer. However, that that deadline is not set in stone. The next piece of news is all about a website I found that attempts to argue why now is quote unquote the perfect time to buy a PlayStation 4. However, now is anything but the perfect time, and I will explain why here in a second. This entire list is 14 items long, and six of these are PlayStation 4 exclusives. Of those remaining eight, only two cannot be said of the Xbox. So out of that perfect time to buy a PlayStation 4, there's only two things on this list. And that is Spotify integration and PlayStation VR support. Now, the reason why you shouldn't get it is because there are only, there's only a little over 550 days between now and November 2020, like early November 2020. That being said, you could just put a dollar in a jar every day between now and when the PlayStation 5 launches and you will have saved up plenty of money in order to prepare for that thing, regardless of how much the thing costs. We already know it's going to be in the ballpark range of five to six hundred dollars. Well, we, we suspect as much anyway. It's gonna be five to six hundred dollars, even if it is six hundred and you pay maybe a 10% tax rate. That is six hundred and sixty dollars. And how many how many days did I say it was? Oh yeah, five fifty. So you only have to come up with one hundred and ten dollars at the most to pay off the PlayStation Five. And there's it. Almost. The next story is all about HTC and their final release from the decades-long slumber of Twitter. Okay, so they have finally posted about a 5G wireless hub, essentially going to act like a Wi-Fi router. Like, in case you don't remember what I've said about 5G in the past, let me just refresh your memory. 5G is the next level in mobile connectivity and will allow you to be able to stream your virtual reality content. At the moment, it is too data intensive and too quality intensive for you to be able to get that level of, well, quality out of any sort of streaming service. However, 5G will give you that strength of connection to be able to allow for that. In fact, in the Twitter post that mentions it, they even tagged the Vive and the Vive port, both of which are going to be, are, well, they're, they're virtual reality. So, you know, this next big story is all about what we can expect out of Google's I.O. conference. Now, of course, there's going to be the standard stuff like phones and up like hardware updates and things that they may add to their search engine or their advertising policies or maybe even to YouTube. We don't know. I don't know. I and frankly, I don't really care. Well, I, I kind of do care about the YouTube stuff, but as far as this channel goes, I don't care. What, we, what I do care about, though, is the Stadia. Now, the Stadia was, was talked about at the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco earlier this year, 
And when they did mention it, they they brought it up and talked about it as though it was the best thing since sliced bread. How it's going to have 4K, 60 frames a second, split screen capability, streaming all your games to any screen, anywhere, in the blink of an eye, and you wouldn't have to wait for anything, and you wouldn't have to you wouldn't have to worry about pricing or anything like that. But what we don't know is cross-platform play or pricing or when it's going to be released. What we can suspect, though, is that the pricing for this is going to be on a subscription-based model. Because Google is the size that it is, you know, a, a worldwide enterprise, it stands to reason that they would want to try to make as much money as possible off of this thing. And if they were to charge maybe $20 a month for a library of, I, I don't know, like 700 games, I don't know about you, but I would be supremely interested in something like that. 20 bucks a month, you get 700 games or something, you, pay, you play it for like a year, maybe get a year's access for $1,200 or no, $120 or something, and then you're good. Or at least you think you are. And then you're happy for a while, and then you get bored, and then you move on to your next game. But you don't have to worry about spending an extra $60 on that game, though. That's going to be the best part about it, because they will still be able to get all, every element of that situation is going to be happy because everybody gets their money there was this last story i was going to talk about how there is this vr company that's being able to teach you language in a very unique and interesting way but because it doesn't touch on video games i'm just going to skip it and just put the link in the description down below so if you guys want to listen to it, or read it, or review it, you guys can check it out on your own. I believe this is a good place to end the video. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm a horrible human being for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.